Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. This segment today is called Wicked Wednesday. If you didn't know, Wednesday is the new release for new comics that come out every week. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. I will also name one book to be the speculation pick of the week. I also wanted to note that comics these days are made with a lot of female leads and not just supporting characters anymore. Female comic book characters are really coming into their own, which you're about to see this week especially. First up, DC is giving us Green Lanterns number four. This is the story of female lead Jessica Cruz, who's the new Green Lantern along with her partner Simon Bass. They're rookie Green Lanterns and they gotta figure this out on the fly. Next up is Batman number four. You should be buying Batman every month that it comes out because it's Batman. What other reason do you really need? Next up is DC Universe Rebirth number one, which is going to a fourth print. Retailers really underestimated just how popular Rebirth is going to be, so they underordered everything, so it's having to go to multiple prints to meet the demand. Look out for a variant cover for this fourth print, by the way, at your local comic book store. Next up from Vertigo Comics, which is a division of DC, is The Sheriff of Babylon number nine. This is the story of a Florida police officer that becomes a mercenary contractor in Iraq set around 2004 when it was the most violent and bloody time. This is issue 9 of a 12 part miniseries and is gut wrenching and a great read. Gruesome but so compelling because it's based on real life events that actually happened. Next up is Unfollow number 10, also from Vertigo from DC. This is the story of a dying social media billionaire who is going to leave his fortune to 140 random characters or whoever is still alive at the time of his death. The number in the bottom right is the number of people who are still alive at the end of that issue. So you can see seven people have got bumped off so far. Because the provision was that whoever is still alive at the time of the billionaire's death will be split equally. So if you get rid of other people, then you will have a bigger slice of the pie. It's a very intriguing story. You should go back and try to find unfollow number one so you can start from the very beginning. It's not that expensive. Is usually about $10 on eBay right now. Next up is going to be the most hype book this week, and that's going to be Harley Quinn, who is the epitome of female characters in comics right now. She's clearly the most popular. And as you expect, there's going to be a million gazillion variants for this issue, for this reboot of this character. And the comic, she's actually going to be fighting zombies in her hometown of Coney Island. DC's marketing of this is perfect because they're releasing her new title around the same time as the release of the Suicide Squad movie. So it's going to be Harley Mania, Harley Quinn all the time. And that's not bad because it's a good character that has grown over time and is no longer dependent on the Joker for her existence. Next up, let's see what Marvel was up to. And that's going to be Deadpool number 16. And this is a Civil War 2 tie-in. First name dead, last name Pool. Get used to it. Next up, there's more Deadpool with Deadpool vs. Gambit number 3, which is part of a six-part miniseries. That's a goofy cover, but it's a good read. This is more Deadpool than you ever wanted. It's talking about his secret relationship with Gambit in the past when they were both working as con artists and swindlers and hustlers. Gambit cleaned up his act later, but obviously Deadpool didn't. Next up is Moon Knight number five. This is a great exploration into the mystical and the horror that Marvel doesn't really do that much. Next up is The Punisher number four. The Punisher has renewed interest in him from his appearance in the Netflix series in Daredevil. Next up is Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane, The Omnibus. This is a complete collection of the essential works of Todd McFarlane on his Spider-Man run. Depending where you go, it retails for about $75 to $85. It's intended for hardcore McFarlane fans. Next up is The Invincible Iron Man number 12. There's some serious implications in this issue that are going to impact the character for time to come. This is a series to introduce Riri Williams in the issue number seven, who's going to take over as the new Iron Man, or you should say Iron Woman. She's a 15-year-old African-American female and an MIT student with genius intellect. She reverse engineers one of Tony Stark's armors in her own dorm room which was depicted in issue seven, like I said before. Then on issue nine, she not only rocks the cover, but she does her first crime fighting escapade. Riri is expected to take over as the lead character in the Iron Man title as early as November, so you might want to pay attention to what's going on now. Next up is our report on independent comics and small publishers. First up is Torchwood number one from Titan Comics. This is a story of a renegade criminal investigating group founded by Queen Victoria, which battles extraterrestrials and supernatural threats. It's not very well known in the United States, but this is based on the British sci-fi television series. Next up from Valiant Comics is 4001 AD Bloodshot number one. This documents what happened to Bloodshot in the far distant future, part of Valiant's summer crossover. 
Next up, also from Valiant Comics, and a potential sleeper hit is 4001 AD, War Mother, number one. You've seen strong female protagonists in a dystopian future before, but no one can do sci-fi quite like Valiant does it, so you definitely want to get this. This is not this character's first appearance. She makes a very small cameo appearance in the Book of Death number one. You should be able to find this for cover price or less at your local comic book store. It's good cheap speculation. Next up is Blood and Dust number one from Danger Zone. This is the story of Judd Glenley. He's the first American vampire and he's called back into action to fight back against an evil that's living in the swamp next to his backwater town. This is a nice pickup for vampire and horror fans. Next up is the speculation pick of the week. And this week is going to be Lady Killer Part 2 number one from Dark Horse Comics. And I don't think you know how excited I am to see this series return. It's the story of Josie Schuler, and it takes place as a period piece in the early 1960s. She's a housewife by day, but a contract killer at night. Lady Killer 1 Volume 1 was a surprise hit from 2015 last year, and with a thin print run of only about 8,500 copies, it became a big, big collector's item real quick and selling at a premium. It's coming out the same week as Harley Quinn, and retailers are going to over-order that, and they're going to under-order this causing an imbalance between a low supply and a high demand, causing price increases really quickly, especially on the variant. In a way, Lady Killer reminds me of the TV show Mad Men. It's taking place in the early 1960s, and it has a flawed lead character. And in this case, the flaw is murder. She murders a lot of people in this comic. <laughs> Speculation or not, if you have a bloodlust and you love dark humor, then you will really, really love Lady Killer if you missed out the first time. Pick it up this time around. Just because I named the speculation pick of the week doesn't mean that this report is over. Image Comics is having a huge week. First up is The Discipline, number six. If you took Fifty Shades of Grey and mixed it with the horror genre, you would have this, and it's pretty damn good. Peter Milligan is a fantastic writer. Next up is Kill or Be Killed by acclaimed writer Ed Brubaker. It's the story of a young vigilante, but he's not afraid to use some guns. This reminds me of the comic series Kick-Ass, but with guns. Next up is Low Number 15. This is a story of what happens to humanity once it's sent literally underground to escape the expanding sun. This is an underappreciated piece of fiction. Very few books are written and drawn as well as this book is. Next up is Paper Girls Number 8 by Brian K. Vaughn. This comic just recently won an Eisner for Best New Series. And it was well deserved. This book is weird but very entertaining and easy to follow without being dumbed down. Next up is Tokyo Ghost number nine. This is a series that's written by Rick Remender. He recently made news because his series Deadly Class was picked up in the option as a TV show. However, his best series may be Tokyo Ghost. It takes place 80 years in the future where everyone is addicted to technology and it follows the story of two peacekeepers that have to navigate this crazy new world. And it's Japan of all places that's actually tech free in this universe. And last but not least for this week, we have The Walking Dead issue 157. This is part one of six of The Whisper War. The Walking Dead franchise is a cultural phenomenon. They're also offering a very hot Arthur Adams artwork. I would like to recruit him to draw The Walking Dead every month. It should look this good. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday, where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. And don't forget to share this video, click on subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow. Thank you for your support.